Good morning, everyone, and welcome along to today's Tired Masterclass, how to set up your financial accounting the right way. This is our 27th Masterclass overall, and the last in our September series of how to start a small business. For September, we changed things up slightly. Uh, we had two Masterclasses a week, uh, each being around 30 minutes long, and giving you the how-to guide of how to, how to start a new business. Because of the time restraints, we won't be doing a Q&A session at the end of today, but if you have any questions, do please send them along uh, to the email address, which I'll share in the chat room a little later on. It's either that way or that way. Um, I'm really pleased to see a good number of people joining us this morning. Welcome along. Uh, if you're watching this uh, on our YouTube or on demand services, great to have you along too, and thank you for finding us. My name is Kuhn Hawker. I am the event manager here at Tide. Um, and for those of you who are maybe new to Tide and what we do, I, might, I wanted to give you just a quick overview of our services. So we are the fastest growing online business current account provider in the UK, and we currently have over 200,000 members. And our aim is to provide our members with a service that saves them both time and money when it comes to their business banking. We're brilliant for SMEs and for startups and for freelancers. And as there are no credit checks or monthly or annual fees in the account, this allows you to try us out free alongside your current business account provider and do a direct comparison. The sign-up process itself, really simple, takes between five and 10 minutes. And at the end of that time, you'll get your sort code and account number so you can start your banking with us straight away. Um, and there are really useful um, in-app products as well. Um, a couple of my favorites, the ability to send completely customizable invoices out. So you can use your logo, it can be a logo on the invoice and you can completely, completely edit the email that goes out with those invoices as well. And the account itself can be built, uh, sorry, split into four sub accounts. So you can have a sub account for your tax, for your marketing spend, for your event spend, for your wages, or anything that makes it a bit easier for you to run your business finances. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit later on uh, about how to stay up to date with what we're doing here at Tide in terms of events and how we can make it even easier for you to become a Tide member. But we're going to get on with the main body of the masterclass this morning. And we're going to start by having the panel introduce themselves. It's really great to have them both along. And we're going to start with Ben. Good morning, Ben. Uh, good morning, Kieran. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Ben Gibbs. Um, I work for Zero. Uh, I've been with Zero since 2015, uh, based in our Milton Keynes sort of head office here in the UK. We have got offices down in London and up in Manchester now. Um, originally, Zero was founded in 2006 uh, out of New Zealand, uh, Auckland, and uh, originated in, uh, there and sort of came over here in 2010. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about me and a bit about Zero. So over to Emma. Morning everyone, I'm Emma White, I'm one of the partners at A4G LLP, Chartered Accountants. Um, A4G stands for Accountants for Growth, so we work with a lot of growing businesses, helping them to really get what they want out of running a business and make the most money they can. So thanks very much for having me, Tide. You're very welcome, great to have you both along. So we're going to start this morning uh, with Ben, and Ben, um, you, I think you're going to talk to us about the benefits of using Zero when it comes to um, you know, sorting out your finances as a small business. Yes, uh, exactly that. Um, again, good morning, everyone. And uh, firstly, thank you to Tide and Kuan for inviting me along this morning um, to discuss uh, how best to set up your financial accounting uh, in the right way. Um, so here at Zero, we really encourage third party app integration as we want to be the home hub of your business. And it's what really sets us apart from our competitors. Um, this is reflected in our add on app marketplace of over 800 different partners and working with new banks such as Tide, um, instead of the more traditional sort of big six here in the UK. Um, it's always been the zero vision, being solely cloud-based since 2006 when we started, as I touched on earlier, and there's never been a better time to join um, the cloud or get on board with the cloud in this new world of social distancing and working from home due to sort of COVID-19 restrictions globally. Um, and again, with sort of the, the recent changes in government legislation with things like making tax digital for all VAT registered businesses to need to be filing online. Um, again, never been a better time to be online with your bank and your, your financial platform and your accountant as well. Um, so in my five, five plus years here, I'm seeing more and more people being aware of Xero or using an online accounting software. Um, previously, but it can be a little bit overwhelming at a first glance for a new business startup um, looking at a blank page and knowing where to start. We, again, it's one of the first questions that crop up when, when I speak to new small business startups, new customers, they, they're a bit like, oh, Ben, where do I start? Um, great to be here today and just to advise you guys that the bank account is always where I would recommend starting on zero. 
it does really bring it to life with some of your own financial information and data being pulled in automatically, seeing your own sort of figures in there. There is a demo company within Xero, but again, some of the feedback that I've had on that previously, because it's not your actual data, it can be a little bit sort of lost on people. But again, by plugging in your bank account as a first point of contact with Xero, with it, with your own figures in there, it's obviously um, a lot more real, let's say. Um, you can do that on the free trial of ourselves that we offer, or obviously just setting your account up from day one. Uh, like I say, bank account is always uh, the first place to start. Um, so obviously, as the slide details there, the main benefits of uh, linking to something such as Tide is the automation and time saving. So we automatically pull in your Tide transactions, or I should say Tide automatically push your banking transactions into zero. So no need to sort of manually log into your Tide account and sort of print off statements or export them. Um, and then be doing it the old traditional manual way of printing it off and cross-referencing it with sort of paper invoices or in a, in a cash book, say, for example. Um, and then the, the whole time-saving element that that brings, um, it just gives you and your business hours back. And whether that's doing more business um, or just more sort of family time, friend time, leisure time, obviously just giving people back time is just a massive time saver to uh, small businesses um, also the benefits the reduced errors so again we found paper-based printing statements manually cross-referencing things were getting lost transactions were getting lost so there's a massive reduction in accountancy errors and business errors and the um, the live snapshot so insights on the go or if you're at home due to sort of COVID-19 again for example um, we can be proactive instead of reactive with our business decisions and the best thing about Tide, as Kieran touched on earlier, it's updated every two hours within Zero as well. Um, so it really is a live snapshot of how the, um, the business is performing um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you could just jump onto the next slide for me, please, Kieran. Um, so when we set up the Zero dashboard and we've got Tide linked into Zero, this is like the window of into Zero. So this would be the first thing you'd see. So you've got your Tide bank account there. Um, we've circled the reconciled 28 items. So there's 28 statement lines there on the Tide account that are waiting and outstanding to be reconciled. Um, so that's sort of highlighted. And then a bit further down, you've got the Tide business savings account. You can also have like a business credit card on there, for example, you can have multiple bank accounts on the zero dashboard as well. Um, and then obviously right at the bottom there, we've got the total cash in and cash out. And there's a sort of nice bar chart, a nice visual of the last sort of five months of how the business has been performing there with the blue and the grey bars of money in and money out. Um, so that's like your sort of window snapshot into, into uh, the, the bank accounts there on zero. So if you go on to the next slide for me, please, Kieran. So once we click on that blue reconcile button uh, on the previous page, this is how it then appears and it gives you a lot more information there. So we've circled the statement balance there at the top and the balance in zero. And um, so again, common questions that I often come up against are like, why, why did they differ? Surely it should, should marry up. And that's absolutely right, they should. Um, but the reasons that they may not is because, as we've pointed out, there's 28 items there to be reconciled. Once everything has been reconciled correctly, absolutely those balances should marry up. Um, and uh, any reasons why that wouldn't be it would just be to be with the conversion date or the conversion balance of the bank account. If there was already existing funds in the Tide account, for example, we need to tell Zero that, otherwise it's, it's not aware. Um, so looking at the actual screenshot we've got there, so you've got your bank statement lines on the left-hand side of the screen. So that would be your statement lines from Tide. And then on the right-hand side, we, we liken it to a game of Snap. You've got your transactions there that we've already input into Zero. So we've either got spent or received money transactions. Um, it will do a smart search on things like the exact amount. So obviously we've, we've got two nice sort of random figures there. We've got uh, £1,181.25, pence, quite a specific amount. So it's found and matched nice and easy. We've got the OK button there saying that these transactions very much look like they marry up. It will also search on things like reference numbers and previous patterns and with the sort of technology there in the background, it will become more and more intuitive and start auto-suggesting things as we go. 
And so we've got obviously the spent money transaction first, the received money transaction second, and then on the third one there, um, there's, there hasn't been a match. So there's no OK button, it's not gone green. Um, but you'll see we've circled the create button. And then you can just sort of manually create a transaction within zero to reconcile that £100 that's been received into the tired account there. Um, so that's sort of an overview and a snapshot of sort of zero with Tide. Um, again, with sort of touching back on the cloud-based side of things, never been a better time to be on the cloud. It's obviously the way everything is going and in this sort of post-COVID era. Um, obviously, with, with zero, we've got unlimited users. So again, it brings us nicely on to uh, Emma's piece about linking it in with sort of various colleagues if you're still working as part of a team to uh, bring everyone in-house even if people are working from home or working remotely and obviously still liaising with your accountant or bookkeeper on zero and sort of helping out with that and um, just before i lead into emma and emma obviously talked about her piece from the accountancy background if anyone wants to obviously take out a free trial or take out a subscription of zero q and will put my email address uh, in the chat now um, or later on on the call and people are more than welcome to pop me an email or give me a call and uh, I can talk you through setting up a free trial or setting up a zero account and obviously in conjunction with Tide. But that's all from me and I'll hand over to Emma. Great, thank you, Ben. Um, yeah, so I, I've just put the your email address in the chat room now. Um, and thank you. Great, to, great to see uh, the yeah, the link between Tide and yourself and to see you know how, how uh, easy it is. It can be to set up your accounting in the right way as, as, a, as a starter for a, a small business. So thank you for that. So yeah, we're gonna move on to, to Emma now. And, and Emma, once people have made the, you know, the correct decision to use Tide uh, and Xero for their, for their financial, for financial needs, how do they go about getting the, the sort of best out of those, those services? Exactly. Yeah. So it is really important to pick a good bank and a, big, a good software. And then you need to look at the information that you want to get out of the accounting software. So I think quite a common mistake can be that we start putting um, sort of data into an accounting software without thinking about how we want to use that data um, to improve what we're doing in our business and for operational purposes. So there's actually three different types of costs um, sort of categories that you can have. And I think it's really important to talk about these three and how you use them to, to get the most out. So you've got cost of sales. So that is items that are directly linked to the product or service. So say, say if you were making a product, all the sort of nuts, bolts, screws, bits of wood, whatever it is, that is directly linked to sort of that sale, that would be a cost of sale. So that might be your postage out to customers, you know, that they are direct items that can be linked to the sales. So it is part of delivering that product or service. Now then you have your direct costs. Now these are things that you almost couldn't split down per invoice, but if you didn't have any sales, you might not have those costs. So that can be things like salesmen, workmen, hire of equipment, um, sort of repairing equipment. You know, they are things that actually they are really important to how you deliver that product or service. And they tend to go up in chunks. So it might be that, um, you know, to do a hundred thousand pound of sales, you might need X bit of equipment, but actually to do another hundred thousand, you need another. So that's why they're called direct costs, because they are directly linked to your delivering that sale. And then you have your overheads, which are the things that almost you start up with on day one that, dip that aren't that affected by your initial sales. So even if you make no sales, you've committed to renting a property, you've got to have your business insured, you might have an admin member of staff and you might do some advertising, you know, regardless of whether you get anything from that. So they would be your overheads. Now, defining them in those categories allows you to track them back as well to how you cost products and services for clients because quite often you know you've decided to set up your business you've put together a costing model for how you're going to do that but actually quite a common mistake is to track that that almost like tracking that back to actually what's happening um, gets lost and particularly in the early days you know that's really important to help you tie down that costing and you can learn some really good lessons quite quickly from doing that and making sure you really streamline um, what you're doing to get what you want out of it. 
So then on the next slide, I'm going to talk about, you know, often businesses do maybe multiple services or multiple products that make up their sort of net profit. Um, but when you look at a set of accounts, it's sort of sales, cost of sales, overheads, and it's just this profit number at the end, and there's a gross profit number. Um, and quite often people say to us, no, we make a better margin than that on gross profit. Um, and yes, you may do on one type of service or one type of business offering. Like it might be if you work business to business, you make more money than if you work business to consumer and you might offer both. Um, but actually within Xero, you have tracking categories, there's a project function um, and departments where you can really drill down in multiple ways on where that profit is derived um, and focus on, you know, you might have a loss lead in product or service, but actually then you can distinguish how much of a loss that's creating to generate the additional margin on the other side of the business. And is that enough? Um, so with you know the cloud accounting software it's fantastic because it really allows you to sort of drill, drill down into what's going on and find the answers rather than maybe making decisions on gut feel and um, so if we go to my next slide for many of you when you thought about setting up a business or it came upon you because of redundancy and you thought you know what I'm going to do this for myself and better um, you may have scratched out a bit of a break even to say, right, this is what I need to do sales wise to be able um, to bring home what I was bringing home as an employee or um, whatever you want to bring home. But quite often um, that break even is then just divided by 12. It's like, right, I need to invoice X per month. Um, and what can get forgotten is sort of seasonal trends. Now, we've got a lot of clients that would say to us, oh, we're not a seasonal business, which is understandable, but I think by nature, life can be a bit seasonal. Um, so you tend to find August, where a lot of people are off having holidays with their children, can be a bit of a slow month, um, particularly for any of you that have been salesmen out there, you know, to try and get things signed on the dotted line in August is, can be a bit of a nightmare. Um, and also December is actually a really short, working month with all the holidays um, and potentially snow days you know you never know so we always think that you should be looking at breaking down that break even into sort of a daily sort of a rolling daily figure that you'd look at um, and that allows for taking out sort of holidays bank holidays um, and maybe a few if you're worried about sickness or whatever um, and then you can start monitoring that rolling figure. So having it into a daily or weekly target really allows you to drill down. Um, and actually most businesses that do are, are really successful, you know, they are on top of their numbers on a sort of daily, weekly basis. And so they don't let things slide. And now almost the, the sort of, biggest topic for a business is you know so most small businesses fail because of cash flow not because of profitability um, so it is really really important to monitor your cash flow so we have what we use with our clients is our five minute cash flow tool and that looks at your bank account now compared to what it should be um, now that takes into account sort of accrues cru for tax or what you should have set aside in a bank account for tax, maybe what that money you should be setting aside that month, um, saving for your annual insurance or if your quarterly rent is coming up. You know, they give really good examples of sort of how you track sort of debts that are can be a little bit off account sometimes. You know, it's what is accruing in the background. Now, a lot of businesses do use their tax monies to trade you know it's all part of the working capital cycle but what you need to know is if you're tracking that monthly you get a really good feel for your business's cash flow cycle you know what months are your business tight on cash um, and also the closer you get to maybe some of those annual payments that gap between bank account and what you should have you know if that's getting bigger and bigger each month alarm bells need to start ringing and you need to start getting the right advice from the people you're working with just to make sure that you don't end up in a crisis you know it's 
it's always good to know the things that you need to be aware of. So they are my tips for sort of being financially smart as you set up your business. Great. And um, so we've put some useful tools together, which we will be shared later. Um, and thanks ever so much for having me. Great. Thank you so much. And I think that, yeah, the point about um, uh, the break even uh, rolling sort of daily targets is really, really interesting. And especially around, you know, like you say, Christmas and summer, I think that's something which I'll take away from this for sure. So yeah, as Emma mentioned, we're going to have a resources section in a moment, uh, but just a bit more information about us here at Tides. If you're new to us um, and you want some more information, do head over to the, the website. But if that's too, uh, too much like hard work for you, we'll be sending all of you an email in the next couple of days. Um, and if you are a member with us here at Tide, on that email, you'll have a link to rewatch the session. And if you are not a member at Tide, you'll have a, also a link on that email to become a member all you need to do is click the link download the wonderful tide app follow the really simple instructions and you'll be able to start using tide for all your business banking needs uh, for links to all our previous master classes or information on upcoming events please visit our blog site uh, or our events page links to which are, will be in the chat room in a second we also of course have youtube channels and facebook and twitter and all the other social media channels and links to those are also in the chat room as well uh, if you're watching this on youtube all the links that, that we're discussing uh, during this session will be in the description of the video so please find them below this um, and if you're watching this uh, live we're also going to run a survey after the session just about future webinars and topics and speakers so if there's anything that catches your eye there please do uh, let us know and if you want to leave us a comment on YouTube about um, future webinar topics or speakers please do so and we'll look forward to receiving those too so we'll just move on quickly now to the resources section Emma these are from you and these resources will, will be live in the chat room too as Emma speaks about Fantastic. So we've got some newsletters that we kind of put up for our clients that are about sort of management accounts and understanding what you're being presented with, because that's really important. Um, and never be afraid to ask those questions. You know, you know your business really well. And sometimes that doesn't always marry up with the financials you're presented with. So it is important to work, you know, with your advisor to get that to give you a true representation. And um, then we've got the break even, we've got the break even calculator that we talk about. So that's quite an interesting read. Um, also, any of you can download our five minute cash flow tool. Um, that is really useful. It's a, it's a really good one for clients. Um, and we've also put, we put together a coronavirus business hub, which was all about planning um, sometimes in the unknown. So trying to predict the future and what you can be doing and, and just give people a bit of comfort um, around all sorts of things, not just necessarily accountancy. There's some HR, there's some legal staff. Um, I think we all entered a bit of an unknown. So um, there's, <laughs> there's some stuff on there you might find useful as well. So thanks very much. Wonderful. That's some great resource. Thank you so much. So that's the end of today's masterclass. Thank you all for watching this live or finding us on YouTube or through our on-demand services. Some really great and uh, insightful information from our panelists, from Emma and from Ben. So thank you very much, Emma and Ben, for taking the time out today to, to help us with that. And we'll look forward to seeing you all at future masterclasses. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you for having us. Thanks very much.